Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Okay, I've shaped the nick and I made the narrowest part of the nick one inch and the widest part one and a half inches. And what I'm doing right now is hand sanding with a power sander. It sounds like a contradiction. So you can see I can take those little lines out really quickly. And I'm using a very light touch and I've actually locked this headstock so it won't rotate while I'm doing this. Because think about it, if this thing was spinning, how can you hand sand it like we normally do? You'd be getting your knuckles busted every time you moved on it. Once I get this part sanded down, then I'm gonna turn the lathe on and sand the foot and the neck on it. And once those are moving, I can sand those pretty easily. But right now, I'm just taking out some of those lines. And remember, this is in grain where I'm sanding right now. So that's why it'd be really hard to do this without a power sander. <laughs> you could do it, but you'd be there for a long time. Okay, I have the piece reversed and it's in the chuck. And what I'm doing right now is I'm drilling about a three inch deep, three eighths inch wide hole. Because we gotta have a spout with a hole in it so we can get stuff out of it and put a cork into it too. And the cork is kind of an important thing. So this fits in like so, but what I wanna do right now is I wanna come in here and loosen the lip just a little bit so this winds up seating about like that. And make sure when you do check this, you have it on a dowel rod so you can pull it back out in case you make a mistake. <laughs> Let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to grab a bowl gouge because I've tried scrapers in here, but the narrowness of that hole right there prevents me from getting the scraper in without the side of the tool itself hitting. So I can't get the cutting edge engaged. So put that there, we'll grab a swept back fine bowl gouge, little bowl gouge, and lower that down, turn this back on. And one thing to keep in mind is, is you have a lot of wiggle here because you're being held by a small tenon, so you want to take very gentle cuts. Let's speed this up a little bit more because if I go too slow with this, I won't get a good cut. But see, I'm just pushing in gently. Just a very, whoops, very light cut. That, the tip touched and it scraped. You're probably familiar with that by watching me turn. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a pull cut back here to clean up the edge again. And I do want the edge to go in slightly. You could actually come back here and do a little push cut too. And clean that up. Because that way when liquids come out, they're gonna roll back into the stem when you're done. So we go like this. Now I can come too and do a little pull cut here. And if it vibrates, that's actually working better for me right now. If it vibrates, my fingers up here keep it from vibrating. And all I'm doing is blending that a little bit. So we'll stop it. We'll grab our cork. Move this out of the way and do a check. Ah, perfect. We are right there. Okay, we've got the piece now mounted with the recess, so the chuck jaws opened up to hold that on the back. I've drilled a one and a half inch wide hole to where I left myself about a half inch wall on the backside. You don't want to go through on this. You don't want to have a really fancy funnel. Anyway, everything's cleared. I'm going to turn this on. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> There's forward and reverse on these things. And I'm going to pick the speed up. What I want to do is just put a gentle curve on the wall here and clean the wall up a little bit. So I'm going to take a spindle gouge with a swept back grind 
and I'm just moving the tool and just gently sneaking up on the bead. I don't want to make the curve too extreme because I'll get into the stem and the foot. And I don't want to do that because that would really change my design. So I'm halfway up, so I'm going to come here and curve this in. Now this area right here is probably going to be covered by our decorative piece of ebony, but I want to slope inward so when the piece sits on here it touches on the outer edge. Just got a little more cleaning to do here. And now what I'm going to do is, that looks pretty good. I'm going to stop it. I don't want to move the tool rest while this thing is whipping around. That looks good and flat. It's going to just take a little bit of sanding. I'm going to pull this back just a bit, raise this up to halfway, and go back for that point tool that I really like. I'm going to come in here and just make one decorative groove by plunging it in here. There we go. Now I'm going to sand this and then we move on to the hollowing. Now we're ready for hollowing. I'm going to use this swan nick that Easy Wood Tools makes, which is really pretty cool. Uh, it's got a carbide tip on here and this nick allows me to get inside. If you were doing something really uh, deep and big, you'd want one of those big hollowing systems, but for something like this, this is perfect. And pick up the speed here because speed is your friend at this point. You want it to move quickly. Probably about 1500 RPM. This lays flat on here. I slide it in. We're at center level. And then basically it's just a simple back and forth motion like this as I worry away the wood on the inside. Any vibration is caused by me being in a hurry. <laughs> and I want to leave about a 3 8 of an inch wall on this side. So I'm working my way back in and out. You see a piece of tape? That's going to tell me how deep I want to make this. My whole goal is to match up with the hole that I drilled in the nick. So this is kind of like watching paint dry, but just keep working this back until you have it hollowed out. And then we'll prepare it for turning the other side. The wall thickness is perfect. Now just one last cut before we take it off and turn it around. We're going to put a dovetail on the inside of this lip. Now I've put my extended pin jaws on here and that little dovetail I cut is going to fit right on there. Well, we open the jaws up and wiggle it till it fits into place. And I'm going to tighten it just a bit. Holds that beautifully. All we're going to do now is we're going to turn this side just like the other side. The only critical thing about it is, is I want to look at the neck here and however much wood I have exposed over here, I want the same amount over here. So you see I'm going to take off about eighth of an inch on this side. But anyway, we'll turn that and then we'll be ready to turn the ebony inserts. Really cool looking stuff. And I need a gouge. Pick that one. Okay, cool. Okay, what I've been doing for the last couple minutes is putting a tenon on both ends of an ebony blank that's about two and a half inches round. And why am I doing this? Because these are going to plug the hole we have in there and also the recess that we have over here. So I'm turning this one right now and that does fit pretty good. We want a nice tight fit because we're going to epoxy that and hopefully no liquids will come out, but the tighter that is, the better it is. Put this around, you can see that that goes on there nicely too. So. Ebony is expensive, that's why I'm using one blank for two pieces. And we don't need much, we just need a little medallion, almost like a pendant. Grab my little thin parting tool here, turn this back on, and we're going to go straight down the middle. Now if you notice, I'm holding this between centers, and I'm using a stab center, which has a little spring in the tip, right? One important thing about that is, is as you get further down on your cut here, that spring is going to push in and it could pinch everything together. So I'm going to take this, just back off my tailstock just a little bit. Everything's still spinning. I barely have the teeth engaged, but it'll take some of the pressure off. And so I can take this down to a smaller diameter now. And one cool thing is ebony is just a tick on the brittle side. So when I stop this, 
and take this off, all I have to do is twist it, and there, we have both pieces. Okay, I have the um, blank mounted in my pin jaws, and I'm just holding it by that tenon, and I'm using another carbide tip scraper. This one's really cool because you can see it has a little radius on it. Well, the radius is better because I don't have any sharp edges to dig in, so it helps me does, does helps me do curves. And I'm just going to curve this just like I did the sides of the uh, Roman canteen. Just want to get a nice shape to it. And once I do that, then I'm going to put in three decorative marks, just like I did on the side there. Sand. And then I'm going to mount the other disc and do the same to it. Now to keep the liquids from coming out of the Roman canteen, we need a stopper, right? Well, it's made with a piece of, uh, this is Coca Bolo, and then I have a 3 8 inch dowel inside of here. I drilled a hole, glued it in, but how do you hold something like this on the lathe? Well, you use what's called a collet chuck. It's a Morse taper, and this thing has slits in it. So when this goes in here like so, it'll close down on here. Well, how do you make it close down? Well, it's threaded on the back, and I have what you call a draw bar. So you take this bar, put it through the hole in the headstock like so, you bring this up and thread that in. Then once it's thread in here, I go back to the headstock over here and tighten down the handle. Now once I have that good and tight, I bring out my tailstock for a little bit of support, and then I can start turning this. Once you're done sanding, pick up the speed. Hut makes a really cool two-piece wax. The brown one does a little smoothing, and the white one does some really pretty polish. But this is Coca Bolo, and Coca Bolo does not take finishes too well because this is, has such a high oil content in it. So I'm basically using pressure to melt the wax in to the stopper. Once that's melted in and I got all the lines gone, we grab the white hut. And put this on here and you will be amazed at the finish on this stopper. Once I pulled the stopper off the lathe, I put a cork on it. They come pre-drilled with a hole. I used some wood glue, and then I just nipped the end off on the bandsaw, as well as, whoops, wrong end, I nipped the bottom off on the Romaine Canteen, and then I sanded that. So now it sits nice and flat. The next step, though, is to get yourself some two-part epoxy to glue in your discs. Now, you want epoxy because it is waterproof, and it will hold up and keep all your liquids from coming out. So once you have that done, put your little stopper in there, you want to put on a hand rub polyurethane, only on the outside. Don't do the inside because it will affect the taste of your beverages. And speaking of, <laughs> until the next time, keep turning. Ugh, who put water in there? Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.